Recent statistics from the Uganda AIDS Commission reveal that Fort Porto City and Ambara District have the highest HIV or AIDS prevalence rates in Uganda. At a workshop held at Oxford Inn in Ambara, it was reported that Fort Porto City has a prevalence rate of 17.8%, followed by Ambara District at 14.4%. Other areas with high prevalence include Soroti City at 13.3% and Kalangada District at 12.8%. The national average prevalence rate is 5.1%. Dr. Stephen Asimwe, the HIV or AIDS Prevention Officer at the Uganda AIDS Commission, attributed the high prevalence rates in some areas to the growing number of sex workers. A hundred grand of people, about five of them, out of a hundred in the whole country, out of 100, about 5 will return the positive HIV test. So this is progress. However, when you zoom in on certain populations and on certain geographic areas, you find that the burden is still high. And that is where we are starting to focus now. So for women, for example, the prevalence is 6.5%. For sex workers, and this is female sex workers, if you test 100, about 31 may return an HIV positive test. In fishing villages, in fishing communities, you test 100, about 23. In prisoners, you test 100, about 15. And those are the subpopulation, you know, disparities. So now when you go to the geographic, uh, in the geographic disparities. So I have shown the top 10. Top 10 here, starting with Fort Porto, 17.8%, Mara District, 14.4%, Mara City is a bit lower, 8.1%. I think it is not on my slide because it is not the top 10. Then there is Soroti City, 13.3%. Dr. Asimwe also pointed out that young girls are contracting HIV or AIDS from older men, a trend that needs urgent attention. Between the men and the vulnerability of young girls, and of course when we give the age distribution of the victims, so if you now look at the accused persons, I think you can guess who the accused persons would be in some of those uh, uh, cases. So. The issue here is that we should engage the men in different ways. And here now, that is where I will not have the answer. But when it comes to time for discussing, that is where we need, that's where we need help really. How do we engage the men to address some of these problems? Then there's treatment for people with the HIV. Then there's elimination of mother-child transmission which is now, if a mother has HIV, they should not give birth to a baby who has HIV. Brenda Asim Wei, the assistant town clerk for Embarrass City, urged journalists to disseminate accurate information about the HIV or AIDS status in the country to strengthen the fight against the disease. And as much as we, we, we rely on you to relay important information to the citizens, we also rely on you to relay accurate information to the citizens. That's why these people keep inviting you here to refresh you on what's going on on the current trends so that you keep abreast of what is transpiring in the, their fields of expertise. So on behalf of the city, we would like to thank the media for the long-term cooperation that is existing between us and them because you are part and parcel of what we do and what you relate to the citizens is much appreciated. Journalists at the workshop shared the challenges they face in raising awareness about HIV or AIDS prevention. Uh, lack of inadequate knowledge and skills in, in, interpret, in interpreting HIV manuals data analysis and compilation of factual stories. They were showing us figures, but a few of us can easily interpret those figures. There is still a very big gap between HIV, between, uh, HIV focal persons, scientists and journalists. 
some of these information holders here giving out their information to journalists, fearing that they will be misquoted. A study by the Uganda Network of Sex Workers found that 18% of sex workers aged 18 to 24 have been engaged in sex work for at least five years with an HIV incidence rate of approximately 40 per 1,000 among female sex workers in Uganda.